Hi everyone and welcome to our group presentation. My name is Kat. And my name is Kelsey. And today we'll be covering Mel Brooks. Here's some Mel Brooks facts. He was born June 28, 1926 in Brooklyn, New York. He's been an active actor and film director since 1949. He's directed 11 films and acted in 31 films in that time. We decided to watch The History of the World Part 1, Blazing Saddles, and the producers, the singers, and Springtime for Hitler. We'll now go a little bit more in depth on each of these films as our presentation continues. So the first film we decided to touch base on is The History of the World Part One. Um, and we're only going to give you a short summary of each film in order to avoid um, making this film too long. So The History of the World traces through a series of monumental historical events, all while putting a humorous, judgmental spin on it. This humor can be seen as crude many times while tracing through events starting with the Ten Commandments and ending with the French Revolution. To the right is the scene we found most influential. Uh, Mel Brooks plays Moses. He's handed the the 15 commandments, that's three different tablets, each with five commandments on it. And before turning to present the commandments to the community, he drops one of them. And thus, now he only has 10 commandments. Instead of questioning this or anything, he just continues on and says, these are the 10 commandments presented to me. Um, we found this important because it really demonstrates Mel Brooks' sense of humor by taking an uh, inappropriate take on a classic religious topic. So the second clip in the film, um, we decided to cover um, the film where Emperor Nero, which is actually played by Mel Brooks, um, Emperor Nero abuses his power as an emperor and sexually harasses Maria Antoinette. Um, we chose this clip um, because it represents Mel Brooks and his work since he is usually um, very crude um, with his humor. Uh, Brooks' work with this film was regarded as outrageous for the time, no doubt, but it definitely wasn't as outrageous as some of his previous work, which we'll cover later in our presentation. So who is Mel Brooks? Mel Brooks is regarded as one of the best comedy writers and directors and actors of his time. To this day, his work is influential in comedy films. He's allowed directors and writers to be outrageous and impossible in their own creativity, thus giving way to an era where vulgarity and crude humor in modern films is expected and appreciated. You can think back about some recent, such as Dirty Grandpa or The Neighbors. These films are so out there and straight up with their humor, they don't hide any crudity or vulgarity and it still draws such a large audience, which is important, and it's all because of Mel Brooks. However, as influential as it is now, it's important to recall that his comedy was not always taken so well. These films we are discussing are a true testament to just how vulgar his humor could be, and the reviews represent just that. Um, below is a review from Springtime for Hitler, uh, and it's from the New York Times. It says Mel Brooks will do anything for a laugh, anything. He has no shame. He's in an Arctis. His movies inhabit a universe in which everything is possible and the outrageous is probable. So the second film we decided um, to cover is A Blazing Saddles. And in this um, film, um, it takes a humorous take on the Westerns um, and it presents a railroad worker named Bart who becomes the first black sheriff of Rockbridge. Um, and this town was a, sorry, this town was about to be destroyed in order to create new railroad. And um, so initially, but first initially the people of Rockbridge reactively reacted <laughs> racially to their new black sheriff, but eventually the people of their town warmed up to him after realizing that he was their last hope in saving Rockridge. And to your right, you have the town um, welcoming the new sheriff. Um, and below, um, you can see the confusion in the man's face when they saw who the sheriff was going to be. So at this point, the sheriff is riding up on a horse. Uh, don't forget, his name is Bart, and he's a black sheriff. You can truly see in this next clip how puzzled the men are. They don't realize that this is truly what's happening. Um, so we chose these clips as a representative of Mel Brooks' work because of the humorous take on the racial reality in a Western town. We thought this was important because 
it truly shows that Mel Brooks does not sugarcoat any of his film. He may put a humorous spin on it, but he's still presenting the reality of what could be happening. Um, connecting this film with our previous film, Blazing Saddles, was reviewed as more outrageous and vulgar. The film did not sugarcoat anything. It was blatantly obvious with their crude and obviously raci racial material. It was reviewed saying Mr. Brooks' comedy has rewarding shock, especially when he's being insulting or rude, or when he's going too far in areas usually thought to be in bad taste. Um, and for our last film, um, we covered The Producers, which is the singers in Springtime for Hitler. Um, once a prominent... Prominent Broadway producer Max is now down and out of his luck, on his luck, sorry. Um, his accountant, Leo, suggests that with the right bookkeeping, the two could find investors and produce a flop together. The two pick the worst play possible, which um, hence the springtime for Hitler, in hopes that the film will close in one night, allowing them to keep all the money, uh, to keep the investors' money. Uh, we chose the clips to the right as a representative of Mel Brooks' work because of the vulgarity and outrageousness of this topic. It's two men. One of them, Max, uses sexual favors in order to coerce women into donating their money and becoming investors in the show. The man to his right, Leo, is his account accountant who is going to fudge the books a little bit just to make sure that they do walk away with a profit when this film or when this theater show ultimately flops. Uh, Brooks, Brooks' work with this film was reviewed as being shoddy and gross and cruel, but still funny in an entirely expected, unexpected way, which is important because we think that's really a testament to Brooks. He may be gross and cruel with his humor, but it still drew an audience and it's still drawing an audience to this day. Um, so what we learned, um, I think that one of the things that we definitely found shocking was that um, such vulgar um, com um, comedy films are created back in that time. Um, the dark sense of humor gave such a realistic twist in the world event um, and to world views. Um, and we felt that this humor is a very, under it's not very, but it's understandable in our generation. But trying to reflect and think from the perspectives of audiences in the early 1960s to the 1980s, and of course, um, earlier on and um, to present time, um, it's just really unthinkable. Um, and second, what we found appealing about Mel Brooks is that overall we feel that Mel Brooks is an outstanding director and actor, um, and he had the guts to speak his mind about subjects that weren't necessarily spoke of, or any, on top of that, he actually thought about, thought outside the box um, when acting and directing these films. But more importantly, he did not sugarcoat or change anything or change anyone's identity in the films to, to deliver the truth of what could actually be going on. We thought ultimately what was most important from these films was the fact that Mel Brooks took his vulgarity and crude sense of humor and turned it into a comedic film, which is so important in changing how we are today. As we said above, it's understandable, and we appreciate this crude, vulgar humor now in our generation, and I don't think that would have been possible without Mel Brooks. Um, and with that, we're going to say thanks for watching our presentation, and we hope you learned something about Mel Brooks. Bye.